eternal God, our Father, we thank you again as we approach another another year, another week, I'm sorry. Wow, I'm way off. It's too early in the morning. Uh, another week of, of worship and praise to the Lord and to, you know, acknowledge him through his word. We thank you for tuning in again. Another week, a little closer to the election season and also for decision making but also many still are dying. We are now over 200,000. As a matter of fact, we are 201,900 in that area right now. Uh, people who have lost their lives to this COVID-19 and families that have been interrupted, the peace of, their fam of the families that have been interrupted because of this situation. And so we, uh, are trying to get a grip on it, but we, uh, and it appears that more unrest is rising from the Breonna Taylor situation uh, in Louisville. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Lord God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. Lord, we thank you uh, that we can call on you, Lord, under these circumstances. Father, we pray for those who whose families have been disturbed because of COVID-19. Lord, we pray for your peace in their lives. Oh God, we pray for those families that are bereaved for other reasons, Lord. God, we just thank you to know that we can call on you even in times like this when there seems to be nowhere else to turn. Lord, we just thank you. We ask that you would <clears throat> bless us and strengthen us, Lord. Give us a conscience for you. Let us evaluate ourselves, Lord, and see how far we have moved from you, O oh God, that we might return to you, Lord, as you have asked us in your word. God, we pray uh, for our nation that uh, is, 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 is just, I don't know what the word is, Lord. You know all about it. You know the circumstances. We pray, Lord, that our nation can turn back to you as a nation that fear God, fear in the sense of reverence, Lord. We we love you. Oh God, we we desire your 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 influence in our our existence, Lord. And so, Father, have mercy on us, uh, your nation. We pray for all the churches throughout the world that lift up the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we ask now that you would bless us and use us to your glory. Touch these, your children who are listening, who are tuned in and be with them as our prayer now. Lord, we just ask that you would protect the children now under these circumstances. Be with them, Lord. Uh, protect them from uh, the death, the unnecessary death uh, that lurks so near. And God, we just thank you that we can call on you and trust you and know that you're trustworthy. You are faithful, Lord, and we pray that you would increase our faith that we too might be faithful. And we'd be so sure to give you all praise, honor, and glory for it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen and amen. <laughs>
faithful pass me not oh gentle savior amen we want to ask that if you would you could turn with us to mark 4 38 and 39 mark 4 38 and 39 jesus was inside the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow the followers went and woke him. They said, teacher, don't you care about us? We're going to drown. Jesus stood up and gave a command to the wind and to the water. He said, quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and the lake became calm. Reading from the English Reader's Version of the Bible. I want to talk to you from the thought today, calming the storm, calming the storm. The miracle in stilling the storm is recorded in all three of the synoptic gospels. Mark, who seldom dates his material, is careful to note, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let's pass over to the other side. It had been a busy day. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem had made a blasphemous accusation. He has Beelzebul, and by the prince of devils cast out devils. Jesus' mother, brothers, and possibly sisters came to see him, hoping to take him home. When Jesus was told that they were outside seeking him, he said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and mother. From 3.34 through 35. Leaving the crowded house, Jesus went to the seaside and got into a boat from which he taught the multitude. He taught by parables, both in the house and by the sea. He had an extremely busy day, and he desired to cross to the other side of the lake, according to verse 35. The eastern shore would be a delightful, refreshing change. Going there would be his only way to escape the crowds. When you've been inundated with busyness and pressure, seeking an escape, to neutralize and chill, so to speak, is not a selfish approach, but a necessary one. And while crossing the lake, Jesus and his disciples encountered a storm. And while resting on a pillow in the stern of the ship, the storm became violent. The fearful disciples woke him crying, Master, don't you care if we may perish or not? According to verse 38. The Bible says he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, according to verse 39. Then he asked his disciples, Why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? The disciples are faced with the wind of circumstances without the waves of doubt and fear within. And after the storm was calmed by Jesus, <clears throat> the disciples said, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? What can we learn from the storm? First, the work Jesus performs. Mark tells us that Jesus had been teaching, preaching, working miracles, and saving souls. One word in Mark occurs over and over in the King James translation, the word straightway, which means immediately <clears throat> and indicates that our Lord was a busy man. He was the toiling savior. He moved among people as swiftly as a sunbeam 
And even today, his overflow of love, grace, and mercy is continuous. Jesus had a compassionate heart, and he worked because he knew time was of the essence. Time was running out. His love moved his divine hand. And so, my brothers and my sisters, when we understand the consistency of the love, grace, and mercy of Jesus, we can rest assured that he knows our predicament and hears our desperate moans. Fear that drives us to Jesus is not a weakness, nor is it wrong. Only when the ship began to fill with water did the disciples cry out, Teacher, don't you care if we perish or not? It's okay for water to be... <clears throat> <clears throat> it's okay for water to be outside of the boat. But when it begins to fill the boat, we should show some concern. And my brothers and my sisters, the boat is filling with the waters of our societal sins and the storms that we are presently manning in the eyes of God are justified. What sins? The very sin that the civilization of Nimrod, when they tried to override the will of the creator, technology has flogged our need for God. Fogged our need, rather, for God. It has us thinking that we don't need God. This creates big trouble for us, as we are beginning to notice. It is surely time to call on the Lord when we find that the more we try to keep afloat, the deeper we sink into the sea of iniquity and failure. Peter said, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you, according to 1 Peter 5 and 7. Second, the storm show how Jesus meets our needs. Jesus toils in the face of physical wants. He did not sleep the sleep of indifference. He slept the sleep of exhaustion. He experienced the pressure of human fatigue. He denied his need for sleep to help his disciples. He is never too tired to help us in our time of need. Thirdly, he, his stilling the storm show how he alleviates our fears. Jesus asked, why are you so fearful? Although Jesus is with them in the boat, it is not always smooth sailing. Such is life, but it is safe sailing when he's in the boat with us. Jesus rebuked the disciples' fear. They should have felt secure with him. The psalmist said he made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed, according to the 107th Division of Psalm verse 29. We are fearful when our faith in Christ is faulty. Fearfulness like a weed springs up out of the soil of weak faith. Somebody said there are 365 fear knots in the Bible, one for each day in the year. Four, <clears throat> Jesus rebukes faithlessness in verse 40. For when you hear Jesus ask his disciples, how is it that you have no faith? We naturally wonder, where was their faith? Did they think that the boat would sink with him in it? The disciples had not yet come to believe that Jesus was the Lord of nature. They had accepted him as the Messiah, but they didn't understand all that that encompassed. Maybe that's our problem as well. How, like us in our troubles, they were. We must ask the Lord to increase our faith. Pandemic or not, we need more faith. Amen? Fifth, in our storms, Jesus provides peace. Jesus said to the raging sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm, according to Mark 4 and 39. When Jesus helps the needy, all the resources of heaven and earth are at his beck and call. For Jesus saves us from the storms of life, from the wrath of God, from the power of sin, from fear, and from perishing. He fills us with the peace of God. He said to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart 
be troubled, neither let it be afraid, according to John 14 and 27. And finally, our storms let us know who Jesus really is. The disciples asked, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? First of all, we need to know that Jesus is human. He was fatigued. He was asleep. But then Jesus is also divine because he was able to rebuke the storm. He is the master of every situation. Jesus is the only savior. He will save his people from their sins, according to Matthew 1 and 21. And Luke 19 and 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And Acts 4 and 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So in closing, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is sufficient for all the events of life. He is also sufficient for our sins and able to take us straight into heaven. All we need to do is trust him. So when the, when the, when the clouds begin to form and the, the waves begin to roar and the, 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 the lightning begins to flash, trust him and receive him as your personal savior. Renew that relationship daily and trust that Jesus will be there with you even in the ship. Amen? God bless you and God keep you is our prayer today in the mighty matchless wonderful name of Jesus. And Lord knows that you all are uh, that you all deserve what Christ can do for you. I want to see if I can find something else for you as I leave you this morning. been sitting a long time. How many love the Lord tonight? And you know what? We get up in our praise services and we sing this song and our tears roll down and, and we get to think about how good Jesus is. Yes, yes, how much he loved us. How much we love him. Yes. And you're so loving tonight. I just want you to close your eyes and did you feel like you threw your hands up in the air? And nobody gonna be ashamed if a tear fall down your ass. Amen. The song just says, The storm is raging. So my soul loves Jesus. My Yeah, my